I, 35 male, was nine years old when my mother left me and my father. She had a car accident on her way to pick me up from school and she never made it back to life. I was devastated. She was my whole world. I learned everything from her. She taught me how to read and write, how to sing and dance, and even how to laugh and how to love. Her presence made my childhood the best I could ever ask for. My father was heartbroken too, as she was a wonderful wife to him. He loved her more than anything in the world. My father was a good, hard-working man with a kind heart and a constant smile on his face. He owned a small bookstore in our town. He was my role model, my mentor, my protector. He was the best father I could ever ask for. But everything changed after the death of my mother as he couldn't cope with her loss. He became depressed, withdrawn, and lonely. He stopped smiling and became less passionate about his business. He gave up on almost everything except me. It's a wonder how my father cared for me during his most depressing days. He never gave up on me and always tried to be there for me, to comfort me and to support me. He always told me I was his reason to live and fight for a better future. He fought his mental battle alone for three years, but when my stepmother Anna entered my father's life, he was once again back on his feet. Anna was a widow as well, and she had a son, Leo, who was six years old when we met. My father met her at a support group for grieving partners. They bonded over their shared pain and their shared love for their children. They became friends, and then they became more. Within a year, they fell in love and got married. To be honest, I wasn't happy about Anna and Leo entering our lives. I didn't want a new mother or a brother. I was not ready to accommodate a new family. I badly wanted my old family back. I was still struggling with my mother's loss, and I wanted her back. But I had to accept the fact that my mother was never coming back, and so I accepted Anna and Leo into my life. Anna was nice enough. She was gentle, sweet, and caring. She tried to be a good mother to me and a good wife to my father. She tried to make me happy and make me feel welcome in her home. But she couldn't feel the hole that my mother left in my heart. Leo was a quiet kid. He was shy, timid, and scared. He had a tough time coping with the loss of his father, but he tried to be a good brother to me and easily got along with my father. But the fact that he was not my mother's son kept bugging me and made me feel distant towards him. It was strange to see how the three got along very well, which made me feel like an outcast. I resented them for taking away my father's attention and affection from me. I felt like they had invaded my space and changed my routine. I felt angry when I saw them being happy and normal when I wasn't. So for the first few months, I ignored them both. I ignored their attempts to bond with me. I was indifferent to the love they showed me and I stayed indifferent to their feelings and emotions. My emotions towards my new family on Leo's seventh birthday. Anna had organized a small party for him at our house. She had invited some of his classmates and some of our relatives. She baked a cake and bought some balloons and decorations. She had done everything she could to make it special for him, but he wasn't happy. He looked nervous, anxious, and insecure. I saw that he didn't know how to interact with the other kids or adults. He had no idea about how to have fun or enjoy his birthday. He struggled to be himself or express himself. He looked like a lost puppy in the middle of the crowd. And I could read his feelings because it reminded me of how I looked when I lost my mother. I felt like he needed someone who understood his feelings other than just living with him. That's when I started looking at him like he was my little brother. I saw that we were not brothers by blood, but by bond. Destiny had brought us together, and now we had to stay together and support each other. He was already trying to be a loving little brother to me, but I had never reciprocated. So I decided to be his brother and stay in his life for real. 
For the next few years, I helped him come out of his shell and experience the world fearlessly. I took him under my wing throughout his teenage years and taught him everything I knew about life. Through my interactions with Leo, I started liking Anna more. Anna always thanked me for taking care of her son while he was struggling. I was happy to do my part as a big brother, and Leo had always been thankful to me for it. By the time I was 25, I had moved out of our home after college and was working. That's when I met my ex-wife, Lisa. She was a colleague of mine at the law firm where I worked. She was beautiful and had all the qualities that I seek in a partner. She was everything I ever wanted and more. We fell in love and got married two years later. I was over the moon as I felt like I got the woman of my dreams and I thought nothing could go wrong. But I was wrong on many levels. Lisa revealed another side of her during our marriage. She became controlling, manipulative and abusive. She would criticize and belittle me openly in front of our friends and family. She lied to my face and gaslighted me into thinking she was the victim each time I caught her lying. She took everything from my life and gave me nothing back. She was toxic, and I didn't see it until I found out that she was sleeping around with her friends. My brother, Leo, was 23 years old by the time my marriage was ending. I could see that Lisa was showing a special interest in him. Leo was studying at an art school. He was talented, creative, and passionate about his studies. Lisa was constantly trying to text him and trying to meet him in person, but Leo was busy with his coursework, so he kept pushing their meeting further. I didn't want a toxic woman like her to enter my brother's life and ruin it. So by the time we filed for divorce, I met him and warned him about Lisa. He listened attentively to me and promised me that he wouldn't let her into his life. But immediately after the divorce, my brother broke my trust and slept with my ex-wife. They didn't care about me or how I felt. They only cared about themselves and their twisted affair. I was sad that my brother didn't listen to me. I loved him more than anything in the world. I had raised him from a shy kid to a confident man, but he listened to my toxic ex-wife instead. I confronted Leo about this and all he could tell me was to get over it. He thought that I was bitter because he slept with my ex-wife, but my real issue was the presence of a toxic woman in his life. I told our parents about this and even they thought that I was jealous of Leo. So I moved away from home in the next few months and focused on improving my life and mental health. A few years later, yesterday, Leo knocked on my door again. By this time, he had married Lisa and they even had a child together. But I hadn't seen my family in the past for years. So Leo appeared like a stranger to me, a stranger who looked like my brother, who I knew years ago. He's in his late 20s now, but he looked like a mess, and I felt like he was older than me. He was a mess. I didn't have much sympathy left for him, but I still took him inside and gave him something to eat. When he started to talk, his eyes were filled with tears, and his voice was guilt-ridden. He came back to me with apologies on his lips and regrets in his soul. He told me that he was broke and he had lost everything in his life. He didn't know where to go and ultimately came to me for help. Now, he needed his elder brother. He came back to me because he had nowhere else to go. Instead of being spiteful and judging him, I decided to listen to his side of the story. He told me how he married Lisa and how they had a son. He showed me photos of his son with passion and I could see that he was a loving father. He told me how he built his whole life around Lisa and their son. He loved being a husband and a father. The only thing bugging him then was the strained relationship with me. But Lisa had made him promise never to approach me again to patch up. So he kept his word and continued living his life without me. But soon enough... Lisa showed her real self in their marriage. She started to mock him publicly and openly started cheating on him. Leo knew about her cheating, but he was ready to forgive her for the sake of his son. 
but he was devastated when he discovered that she was sleeping with his best friend, Max. His best friend was also his art partner and his business partner. It was incredibly difficult for him as cutting them off would destroy his career and life. But he was courageous enough to confront Lisa and Max and they admitted to their affair. They told him that they didn't care about him or how he felt about it. After confronting Lisa about the affair, she took their son and left with Max. Max has pushed Leo out of their business and now he has nowhere to go. He told me this story yesterday and I let him sleep at my house for the night. But today I asked him to leave my house and move in with our parents as I didn't want to take part in any of the drama. He left immediately, but since then, I have been feeling guilty. Am I the a-hole for denying help to my stepbrother who married my toxic ex-wife after our divorce? Update 1. I couldn't sleep last night thinking about the miserable state of my brother. But at the same time, I know how ignorant he was towards my feelings when I requested him to keep a distance from Lisa. He didn't listen to my advice, so I don't think he deserves any help from me now. Update 2. My stepmother called me yesterday late at night. She was crying and finding it difficult to speak. She had seen Leo at night holding a knife to his hand and she had made him stop. She immediately called me and I felt heartbroken. So I flew home today and stayed with my family the whole day. Update 3. I decided to forgive my parents and my brother. They apologized profusely for everything they did to me. I'm planning to help Leo set up a business for himself and be there with him while he's struggling with his loss. Why, TA? You are the elder brother. So you should have the intelligence to treat the past as the past and forgive your brother. NTA, you did what's necessary for your mental health. You had no one while you were struggling, so it's perfectly okay to be selfish now. Next story. Let's start from the very beginning. Over 20 years ago, I divorced from my then wife. I had two kids with her, my oldest son and my youngest daughter. I always had a very good relationship with my son. He was my one and only. At age 17, my son moved in with me and my girlfriend. I always tried to get my daughter to move in too, but she refused. I tried to make it nice for us, but soon I realized that having another mouth to feed was emptying my bank account faster than I could see. I soon jumped from workplace to workplace and asked all my friends for money, which I barely was able to pay back. So I started asking my son for money. He paid for groceries here and there over the years, then he helped me with some bills and even got a credit card on his name for us to use since I couldn't get one due to my debt. It went well for a bunch of years, but still my money was always on the low. I forgot to pay my car insurance for a few months and they ended my contract. So I created a new one with my son's name on it. I asked him, of course, as always, so he always knew what he was getting himself into. Soon he moved out and moved in with his girlfriend. She was a very nice girl, or so I thought. He soon asked me to pay him back some money since he now had some credit card debt. He did the math and it summed up to around $10,000. I really didn't have that kind of money and he knew that. He soon went, no contact. He visited me and we talked normally for some time. Then he started asking me for my car. He asked me if I could give him my car so he could sell it to pay off his debts. I told him no, immediately. I needed the car for my new job since it was in the neighboring city. He told me to take the train and bus and that there were cheap tickets and my job could help me get a permanent ticket. I told him that I couldn't do that. That was at the end of 2021. I told him if I didn't have the money for his debt until January of 2022, he could have the car. After that conversation, he went no contact. January came and I didn't have the money. I really couldn't bring it up and I told him that. He asked about my promise and the car, but I know I didn't promise him anything. I told him I still need the car. We had a long fight over the phone in which his girlfriend said 
that a loving father wouldn't do something like that to his son. With which she meant all the money I took from him. And with that statement, she was dead to me. I got diagnosed with depression due to the situation. I do regret my mistakes, but I think he made me suffer enough. I miss my son, but until he apologizes for treating me like this, I don't want to have anything to do with him either. I feel so torn. My daughter isn't there for me either. A-I-T-A? T-L-D-R. I refuse to give my son my car to pay off his debt, blaming me for everything, even though he always knew what he's getting himself into, and now doesn't talk to me. A-I-T-A? Y-T-A. You majorly took advantage of your son and set him up to struggle in life, and you should be embarrassed and ashamed for that. I suspect your financial issues backdated his moving in, and his eating habits did not put you underwater. Why did you want your daughter to move in if you could already not afford yourself and your son? Oh, hey, I had deadbeat parents just like you, and it took me until my mid-30s to reverse the financial damage they caused. And at 43, I'm still dealing with the emotional damage. Why TA, man? I have three sons all over 18, and if I did what you did, they'd be justified in never talking to me again. By the way, I haven't spoken to my deadbeat father in years and won't be attending his funeral. This is what you're setting up for yourself. Next story. First world problem here, but I'm being called an a-hole for it. A brief summary. I spent most of the pandemic turning my basement into a world-class home theater. I designed it. I spent the money. I spent the time. It took a lot of effort. It's a work of art with a 120-inch screen, laser projector, Dolby Atmos sound system, comfy sofas, popcorn machine, and snack bar. It's all as awesome as it sounds. Needless to say, it's become very popular with family, with friends, with the kids. People are over all the time watching TV, movies, and playing video games. It's great. I love, I've created something so many people can appreciate. And enjoy. While the vast majority of the time this theatre is available, I've made it clear there are times when I want it for myself. Certain sporting events and most certainly the Super Bowl, which is kicking off shortly. I made it clear anyone who wants to join me is welcome. There will be popcorn, pizza and drinks. Come on over, should be great. My wife is off doing something else and our kids, teenagers, are off somewhere else. As it turns out, I thought I might have it all to myself and that's fine. But, like I said, anyone was welcome to join me. I got a call yesterday from family. Wife's sister-in-law, who's married to my wife's brother, who have a couple of kids, 11 and 9, asking if they could come over for it. Sure, I said, but I didn't know you guys were sports fans. I asked if they even knew who was playing. Yeah, she said, Philadelphia, right? The Flyers? No, the Flyers is hockey. Whatever, come on over. I thought the worst thing might be I'd be explaining football rules to people who know nothing about the game, but whatever. They came over an hour before kickoff and the kids ran to the theater while I said the hellos upstairs. By the time I came back down to watch the pregame show, they were on the PS5 playing and asked what movie we'd be watching, which led me going upstairs and discussing with the parents what the frick is going on here. As it turns out, the parents thought they could come over and, of course, I'd hand over the theatre and said so to their kids. And my wife's not even here. After all, I just want to watch the game alone. Why not watch upstairs in the living room? It's a nice big TV. Yeah, no, if you want to watch a movie... Go right ahead. The living room is indeed available, but the theater is the Super Bowl. Which led to a stupid argument, me being called an a-hole, crying kids. I think they've left, but I'm not sure. I'm downstairs alone and I don't care, but I am pissed off that this mood is kind of ruined. Casey just won the coin toss. This is about to begin, and I'm thinking about this bullshit instead of the game. 
I texted and left a message to my wife explaining what happened but have not heard back yet. Okay, first down flyers. That's it for now. But feel free to explain to me if I might be the a-hole in this scenario. I sincerely don't think so. Post game edit. Thank you all for responding, overwhelmingly agreeing with what I thought. That's validating. A few of you touched on a point that's not irrelevant and good food for thought, which is that they knew my wife would be away and I don't think they'd have tried to pull this stunt if she'd been home. Alluding to the point that these people are using me, or at least trying to. I have to reflect on the fact that there's some truth to that, and that's for a whole other post. I have been very open and generous with this theater, perhaps too much. NTA, they were more than welcome to share the theater with you so you all could watch the Super Bowl. But they lied to their kids in the hopes of pressuring you to give in to take the theater for themselves to watch a movie by themselves. You were wise to stand your ground. Honestly, your wife's sister-in-law and brother are the a-holes here, a thousand percent. If I were you, I'd never, ever have your wife's sister-in-law and brother over again. You're being more than generous to share it with people. But if anyone tries a stunt like that, I'd ban them from the theater permanently. NTA, these people thought they could come over to your house on Super Bowl Sunday and take over your home theater? Talk about a sense of entitlement. If they even thought of arguing with me at my house, they would have been going the hell home. Forget that nonsense. Next story. I, 24, male, am estranged from my brother, 20, male, for reasons that are my fault, extended bullying on my end when we were kids. He went no contact with me when I moved out for college, and in those years, without contact, I realized how wrong my behavior was and started therapy. I've since expressed my remorse and desire to make amends to my brother, but he's declined any further contact. For family events in the years since, he went no contact with me. We've sort of traded off. He'll go to one thing, I'll go to the next. But my mom is getting remarried in the fall, and obviously she wants us both to be there. I've told my mom that I'll do whatever I can to make it possible for both of us to be there. If he doesn't want to talk to me at the event, I'll do my best to make myself scarce when he's around. But it's looking increasingly like my brother will choose not to attend if I'm there. My therapist wants me to stand my ground and go anyway, but I'm feeling really guilty about it, especially since the estrangement is entirely my fault. My brother has good reasons for not wanting to see me. I'm remorseful now, but for many years in our childhood, I treated him terribly. I feel like choosing to go is sending him the message that I'm more important to the family than he is. Edit. Thanks for the perspectives, guys. I'm choosing not to elaborate on some things that might give context because I worry about this post becoming too identifiable and I know this sub has a large reach. I hope this doesn't come across as unfair, not playing by the rules of the sub. I appreciate that people have given responses based on different assumptions because I know the situation and can determine if the comments ring true to it. The most important takeaway I have right now is that it might be time to seek another therapist who can give me a second opinion with the full context, rather than just the limited context I can give to Reddit. Info. Is there any possible compromise like wedding for one of you and reception for the other? I assume not, and this could be awkward if people question your mom about it. I'm confused by the therapist saying to stand your ground it's not like your brother is excluding you from things. He just won't attend if you do. It seems needlessly confrontational, aggressive. I don't know anything about therapy, though. R01. I have talked to my mom about splitting up the reception ceremony. The issue there is doing it in a way that doesn't bring undue attention to it. My immediate family knows the full story, but my extended family doesn't. And my brother from what I've heard from my mom, doesn't want to tell them about the estrangement. My therapist didn't use the exact wording, stand your ground, but basically said that I should advocate for myself being there and leave it up to my mom to say, come or don't come. 
this is an area of friction between me and my therapist where confusingly, I feel like he's more on my side than even I am. So I partly came to Reddit for an outside reality check. WNBTA, obviously you made some mistakes and you are owning responsibility for those mistakes. Your brother will need to decide for himself how he chooses to move forward. Maybe he never forgives you. That's his choice. But he can't control the fact that you share a mother. Her wedding day is not about you and your brother's issues. You should both do your best to make it special for your mom. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.